Namaste Soul Tribe, welcome to this pick a card reading in honor of the Scorpio New Moon. I strongly suggest that you pick your card according to your natal moon placement if you want to pick according to your zodiac sign. So let's look at those piles. This is all about your next spiritual awakening. So we're going to choose those piles. The next spiritual awakening. Ooh, <laughs> pile one. I saw this and this card when I chose the deck, and it was in the middle, in the center. Okay, pile one. Let's see your next spiritual awakening for this Scorpio new moon. Okay. Oh nope, nope. <laughs> it will. Yep. Okay, we're going to take this one. It showed itself up. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. There definitely. Let's see, only one. Oh, there's four piles. Four piles. Okay, let's let's do it. Let's do it. One, two, three, four. Can we get some more? <laughs> oh, I don't know where that's coming from. All right, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Okay. So Pile number one, we have the gem, okay? Beautiful car, beautiful multifaceted energy here. And we have Libra, we have Leo, and we have Virgo, okay? Pile number two, we have the storm. Never saw, <laughs> I've never seen any storm that's so beautiful, but yeah, okay. <laughs> And we have Aries, we have Taurus, and we have Sagittarius. Okay, pile number two, we have the ring. Beautiful. We have Cancer. We have Aquarius. And we have Capricorn. Last but not least, we have Eros. Okay, and this is for Gemini, Scorpio, and Pisces. All right, those are your four piles. I suggest your moon placement, but again, you can just choose according to your personal preference. I don't know why I did this here. Let's do that. <laughs> okay, I'll see you there. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to your messages about your next spiritual awakening. You chose the beautiful gem. And if you chose according to your zodiac placement, we have Virgo, we have Libra, and we have Leo. Let's put those aside. Okay. So I want to mention for the ones that are doing the cosmic alignment energy sessions with me, this is one session that I'm going to share with all levels of YouTube membership. Okay. This is deep fascia healing. This is something that is very dear to me, especially working with the energy of Scorpio uh, that is connected to the kidneys, that's connected to bringing us courage and determination on our spiritual journey. That's something that I want to share with all my YouTube uh, star family. So some of you, if you're a part of this or you're interested, you have the link just below in the video description. This session was all about unbecoming. That means that there is at the at the core of this gem you, you see it's like it has this raw shape and a raw matrix inside itself but through the experience there's certain aspect that gave it the specific shine the specific facet the specific knowledge lesson okay so let's see what's your next spiritual awakening my dear pile number one okay so i'm using the star seed deck Ooh, creation you're creating something new here being creative is a wonderful way of witnessing the unfolding of your limitless creative soul this is so interesting because i'm putting next to me and you're not seeing it but the new moon in scorpio like the astrological map and when i see creation i really right away think and connect to the pleasure and the joy of the fifth house in that new moon energy, we will have a Saturn retrograde in Pisces in the fifth house. So that means there's a lot of things that I can sense for you, pile number one. 
that you have retrieved from your experiences, that you have learned, that you've spiritually grown, that you also part of, you know, the negative experience, some of you, if you've experienced trauma, you were able to do something we call light retrieval. You're able to go back in those moments, feel them, to heal them and retrieve back your power. So thanks to this, there is a new creation. There is a new creation that you're able to awaken. That's part of your (laughs) next spiritual awakening is a creation is a part of yourself. It's under the uh, unbecoming, you know, under shedding all those layers uh, that something is emerging. There's an emergence, I feel, for you, pile number one. Okay, so let's see what dragon energy you have that's coming through. Dragon energy is very strong for, um, you know, working with your nervous system and helping and supporting you to move through all the layers of your tissues, of your organs, of your fascia, or joints, ligaments, and so on and so forth. We have here, well, of course, you're going to have the water dragon. I've, I've shared with you the fact that I was, I was really, like, before even looking at what was coming, I knew it was going to be part of the fascia. Okay, Uh, the water dragon helps you flow easily around obstacles, you know, some of you, there's something about your relationship to Atlantis. And now that I think about Atlantis, Atlantis is that, you know, um, that phase that we experienced, you know, that that I'm going to say almost like that. I don't know why I heard dynasty, you know, um, this, this, this whole knowledge and block of knowledge that was all about learning about the self. Okay. And there is this energy of seventh house, sixth house that I feel, especially seventh house. And when I'm looking at the astrology, there is Chiron retrograde in the seventh house, just in the descending line. You know, so there's something about one-on-one relationships or relationships that are not in reciprocity that I feel that were part of what you had to remove. That was part of the unbecoming. That was part of you being able to see yourself with more clarity. I really feel this for you, uh, pile number one. And I wouldn't be surprised with this all submerged uh, energy, you know, and, and fish energy is very much about healing, you know, different fishes, maybe some of you also different fish in the sea, maybe through your relationship, you learned a lot. Okay. Um, that placement of Chiron in the seventh house is all about rectifying the balance of give and take is all about whatever was off growing off alignment is now being rebalanced. So some of you, there might've been, uh, unfairness in the past that has given you a, a different shine. Okay. But now you're able to find space in this, you can see here the surrounding of that gem. It's very, I don't know, I don't, it, it, yeah, there's worms, it's almost like it's been lost in some dirt, in some field, but it's very black and white, you know, a, a very, uh, there's no color, there's no uh, vibrancy, and I feel that you discovered your own colors, your own true colors, your own vibrancy through those type of challenges, okay, but now, because that's your next phase of spiritual awakening, you probably discovered a lot about your true self, about aspect of yourself. Um, and when you're peeling those layers, there's going to be more that's going to be revealed for you. So let's see those cards um, as far as the tarot. What is this next spiritual awakening for pile number one? They have done so much work uh, to understand themselves, you know, and rectifying um, the balance of rela- their relationships. Also, I feel with some of you, there might have been some rebalancing of the ego. And that means that relationship from your lower self to your higher self, you know, maybe fighting, uh, listening to your own guidance. And there's something new that can be born from that place, from that place of honoring 
your own wisdom, honoring everything that you've learned, honoring when you shed that structured water in the fascia, honoring what it has taught you and how you're going to integrate it through those next 28 days. Because this pick a card reading in honor of that Scorpio new moon is the master teachings you're going to receive through this whole 28 day cycle, okay, before the next month. So let's see what we have for you, pile number one. What do we need to know as far as this next spiritual awakening for pile number one? Please, thank you for the guidance. Thank you. I feel that being grateful is like soul medicine to you. Being grateful for everything you've gone through, uh, acknowledging this. Okay, so three of pentacles, beautiful energy for you, pile number one. Uh, your next spiritual awakening phase is all about working in partnership with the divine. Some of you, it could be also meeting or being in a partnership that is feeling sacred or that's like your one relationship where you're going to stay uh, a lifetime long together. You see here, there's like pentacles and growth. There's some growth that is coming from you listening and honoring the spiritual uh, knowledge that you've gathered. Okay, let's see what else. Four of Swords, interesting, beautiful energy here of resting. There's certain things that I feel, maybe certain, oh wow, okay. This is, I was going to say you're putting, you're putting down the swords on certain conflicts. And I was reminded that the new moon in those degrees of Scorpio is actually the number 44, if some of you are curious. Uh, the number 44, if you count all the zodiac uh, degrees from zero, every five degrees, okay, it leads to 44, okay? Major master building number for stability, for groundness, for structure. Um, this is a teaching from Scorpio that is all about honoring our inner wars, and putting, putting an end to those fights, you know, honoring. There's a lot of energy of the warrior of light through those specific degrees, you know, having uh, the courage and the determination, spiritual uh, momentum to, um, to acknowledge certain conflicts. But this is going to also teach you how to honor the fact that the teachings you witness outside in your life are part of a reflection of your inner wars. Okay, so here I do feel that the, um, you know, what I shared as far as working with your quantum fascia, and that's something that I will also list in the description box below, the quantum fascia playlist. So let me um, make sure that you have that pile number one. That's really strong guidance here to help you also, uh, you know, unfreeze, unfreeze from a certain creation. I feel that some of you, you did not realize, but your past trauma, your past experiences, the past way that you uh, were related to yourself, to others, or to your higher self, to your inner guidance, it was freezing you into the same repetition, into the same old attraction. But as you're going to melt this, melt those patterns away and tap into the core of your true self, you're going to be able to create something new. Okay, there's something new that wants to be created. Oh, wow. Eight of Wands. Communication with spirit. You know what's interesting with uh, when you connect eight of wands to the degrees of the zodiac, this is zero to 10 degrees in Sagittarius. This is that energy that is all about serving to others, that is all about um, being great at communication. I feel that your communication, there's something here that you're creating, part of your next spiritual awakening, that it's like the way you're going to express yourself, the person you're becoming through your words, maybe the channel that you're becoming through your words is more in tune with the universe. Some of you, I, I feel, um, you know, I am seeing some interaction with people where 
you appear almost like someone that is God sent or someone that just happens to come up when someone is in need and they're like, oh my God, uh, can you help me with this door? Can you help me this happen? And you just happen to be there or you just happen to catch a conversation and bring a piece of information that a person needed. There's something very um, devout uh, that I feel that is um, that is coming from this new phase, almost like acknowledging how you reconnected, you reconnecting with source energy pile number one allows you to be this channel for others also to their connection back to source. Wow. Is there anything else that pile number one needs to know? So there's a lot here about communication. Oh, wow. Let me see this. Interesting. I'm looking at the third house for communication. This is where Venus is. Okay, um, and interestingly, Venus for that new moon is in the degrees that speak of karma, of, uh, you know, redemption, also accountability. So I feel that there's uh, more weight, more sustenance, more substance in your words. You're leaving behind the old conflicts because you resolve some of them. You resolve the way it was making you feel inside. And therefore, the way you're able to channel and even word, word your sentences has just so much more um, impact. There's something about impact here. You could be someone that is, um, you know, um, a karmic chain breaker, a black sheep, someone that had to um, maybe be outcasted and now through your spiritual rise up, you're able to kind of ripple this effect through the chain because you know you're part of that karmic chain. And that means that when you break free, you're letting loose that whole ripple effect happens in the DNA of the people that are connected to you uh, on a blood level, but also ancestral level, soul level, you know, people that are connected to that chain, uh, your soul tribe family will um, rise up with you there be able to elevate there's just beautiful elevation um, next level energy rising up energy through the words through your words okay and let's see those last cards here they come as a group we have the ten of pentacles beautiful the six of wands wow what are you creating or manifesting here? Pile number one. The magician, again, a confirmation with the, the throat, the words, the communication. But remember, I said here uh, we have Venus in that Sagittarius archetype. That really um, shows that you're speaking from your heart. You're not speaking from the wounded part of yourself. And this is why you're creating a new foundation for your life where you're finally reaping the success of your effort. I feel that some of you, maybe in the past, you were uh, feeling, you know, like working, working, and there was very little results that were shown. It was because of that uh, pattern. You were frozen, oh, I feel, I was going to say for you, frozen in time. Okay, I don't know. Um, there's something here, almost like some, some deep trauma that could be at a soul level, uh, from past life that kind of throws you almost to the quantum fa fascia through time and space. Yeah. Wow, this is, this is deep. Deep healing that is creating this create this new, you know, awareness of yourself and what is possible for you. Now, Mercury... For this new moon, and because that's the magician card, okay, uh, is in the last degrees of Scorpio when we have this new moon event. And this is all about mastering feminine and masculine, being highly productive from not overdoing, but from managing well, you know, your intuition and your action receptivity and then productivity, receive and give, receive. There's just a whole um, divine reorganization that is being like felt at a core soul level here. 
I really feel for you. So let me see, last one, seven of pentacles. Look at this, I told you, reaping the rewards. Some of you, you had to go through um, a lot of long, I would say long karmic cycle. You had to honor and be comfortable with accepting, taking the accountability, you know, with that Venus energy, taking into accountability what was yours and what you could change. Because ultimately, even if someone is doing you wrong or there's an unfair and you're the victim, let's call it that, you can still take back your power. Staying in that victim mentality is not taking accountability for what you can do with that energy. And I feel this is where the shift is really strong for you, pile number one. You're ta you've taken into uh, your own hands your path. You've taken into your own hands your healing. And that has shifted how you spoke about your experience, you spoke about yourself, you spoke about uh, what was possible for you. And as a result, there's this cornucopia, cornucopia? <laughs> cornucopia of, of fruits that is awaiting. Yeah, sorry, English is not my first language. And sometimes I just like to make up words. <laughs> That's what I have for you, my dear pile. And number one, I trust those messages supported you. And if it did, please give it a thumbs up. It supports the channel to grow in return. Namaste. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your messages for your next spiritual awakening. So you pick the storm card. Now, I wouldn't be surprised with this storm energy. It reminds me of the card associated with Mars in the tarot, which is the tower card where we have that uh, thunder striking lightning um, uh, illustration. So there's something that is shifting with this new cycle. This is all about the energy of unbecoming for this new moon in Scorpio. We're shedding so many layers that we're seeing the truth of ourselves, of our essence, who we were always meant to be. Uh, in spite of, you know, all the experiences, and this is where the storm, I feel, is very strong. I'm looking at, because I have the new moon um, astrology map next to me. Mars is going to be in the last degrees of Cancer, so I wouldn't be surprised here. That's very much a protected and divine intervention. Like some of you, if you've been uh, struggling to manifest this new phase or this new level of awareness and wondering like, when is this going to manifest or when is this happening? This is all through divine intervention. Some of you, you had to go through uh, maybe first layers of spiritual awakening to get to that level where you're going to see more and more at your core essence, what you're meant to manifest, what you're meant to bring about. We're going to see some details about this. In terms of zodiac sign, if you chose according to uh, zodiac placement, I suggest the moon because it's a moon reading. We have Aries, Taurus, and Sagittarius. We're going to put them aside. And for some of you that are part of the YouTube Soul Tribe family, I'm going to give access to all levels, okay, all levels of membership to the Cosmic Alignment Energy Session. It's about honoring the process of unbecoming. We are using all the quantum fascia frequencies, and I'm guiding you through acupressure point uh, connected to Scorpio energy, how to release and uh, let that quantum fascia, you know, all those structured water to flow out and release those energies. So some of you, if you're interested in joining us, uh, you'll have the details down below. Okay, so let's see for you, pile number two, what do we have for your next spiritual awakening? What's your next spiritual awakening, pile number two? I feel it's here. We have, ooh, the blue flame. Connect to the blue flame, which is the light of pure love within you. You see, I was very much, you know, I saw how I was um, kind of talking a lot about the unbecoming. It's almost like there is a pure flame inside of you that is shining, that is all the essence of love and that wants to be acknowledged. So some of you, if you've been struggling with self-love, you know, I would say that this 
new moon cycle, which is a cycle of 28 days where we're going to be learning how to do this, okay? Uh, learning how to welcome this next layer, next level of spiritual awakening, but especially in terms of discovering who we truly are at our core, unbecoming, removing the things that we were told that we were or that we had to do or have to be. Um, I feel that you're going to really connect to a deeper version of love. So let's see what dragon energy is going to support you, my dear pile number two. Dragon energy is all about working through the breath, working through the nervous system, working through the vertebrae. That's an energy I love for the cosmic energy sessions. We have, ooh, look at this. I don't remember picking that card ever. Alpha Dragon harnesses the divine masculine power of creation. Didn't I tell you about creation? You're creating and scripting your life. But I feel like even at a core level, all the energy work you're going to be doing it's as part of your next level of spiritual awakening is all going to be imprinted with love, self-love, because you decided so, oh wow, it was 444 when I said this, as far as uh, the portion of your particular pile. That's something, I, before I show you the card, I want to share this new moon in Scorpio, the degrees where we will have the moon and the sun merge together is the number 44. This is going to be an important number for you to remember as a synchronicity of you tapping more into your self-love, tapping more into um, scripting your reality through the eyes of the love that you are, okay? So let me show you this. Destroy the old, visualize your dream, help to manifest a new world. Look at this. If it's not new moon energy, oh my Lord. I would suggest for you, pile number two, um, this is very strong. I don't know why I'm, I'm seeing some type of ritual. It could be some, and you don't have to follow it, but I know that some of you, you're my little magicians and, you know, and you like to do little rituals. I, I'm one that likes to do that as well. Um, I would take a blue candle because you see all this light and I would journal at the light of that candle. It doesn't have to be blue if you don't have it, but candle meditation has been the first type of meditation that I've done when I was able to meditate. It always brought a lot of uh, peace to me. I was actually um, just happen to watch a video, and I think this message is for you, pile number two, because <laughs> I don't know, I, I get messages before, and I'm like, okay, store in my little data bank of, you know, stories, um, but I was looking at a video that spoke of the frequency of fire, and how the crickling, or just the, the, the way the flame and the fire infuses uh, through sound, is very restful, peaceful. I feel like it's going to create a certain atmosphere. And that atmosphere is perfect for you to destroy the old. So I would say that some of you, if you need to acknowledge the things uh, you no longer want to be part of your reality, um, that you've learned from them, saying thank you. Interestingly, when I said this, you know, as far as the ending, we have the Neptune retrograde and the last degrees of Pisces that I'm seeing on the chart here that is in the sixth house. So it's very much in the routine, in the habits, in the rituals that you are going to claim to the universe that you're done with a certain habit, with a certain pattern of attraction. So for example, if in the past you had people um, that texted you and expected you to answer or just be ready or available for you on demand and you just dropped everything for them, uh, I don't know why I'm, I'm seeing this type of empath, narcissistic relationship, whether it's a parent, whether it's family, whether it's relationship, whether it's a boss whatever. Okay. But that type of, I'm dropping everything for someone. Whenever this is presented to you again, because that's how the universe understands vibrationally that you got the lesson, that you have integrated the knowledge. When you stop rushing to 
people please or to honor other people's uh, demands right away and you're maintaining what may be, be most important for you first, you vibrationally put an end to those things. But you got to know what are those patterns. I just you know, expressed one example, but it doesn't have to be just that. Okay. I do feel that some of you watching, if that's you and you just, um, want to say a little hi, just put a little feather. Okay. And I'll know, I'll, I'll know you related to this, you know, <sighs> wow. Oh my God. I feel so much space just saying all of this to you. <sighs> I need water. I need water. Hmm. Some of you, if you're doing energy work with my frequencies, please make sure you stay hydrated because the frequencies, they vibrate high and they force your cells to remove all the lower vibration from the cellular water. So you become dehydrated. You need to replenish with good water. What I do is that I usually have my uh, water bottle next to me when I do cosmic sessions, meditation session. I sometimes create grids. I put crystals around. Some of you, if you want to put crystals in your water, you can certain, you got to be knowledgeable about certain crystals that can go in water and that are safe to drink. Okay. Uh, you'll have to do your research. Um, but I charge my water so whenever I am done with whatever energy work that I'm doing, I know that I'm also uh, replenishing with all the good frequencies from the sound, the tuning forks, the chanting that are imprinted in the water bottle. Okay, some of you, that's something that can be supportive. I feel a lot of the people that chose this pile that are um, acknowledging, you know, their spiritual self. And that's part of what creates your next spiritual awakening my dear pile number two is knowing that in the details in the little habits in the little things that are different you are changing your life course there's also in that sixth house the north node this is going to help you be more on purpose i feel as some of you if you've been looking for that purpose this is going to support you wow look at this king of swords you're going to be your next level and your next layer of spiritual awakening here is all about your truth. You're going to be able to stand in your truth because you're going to have released a lot of the past patterns that were keeping you from shining your light. Look at this. You've, you've gone inward. You've gone inward. You've started to see your own light. You were probably also guided. You have maybe some um, spiritual guidance, your spirit team, or even just through tarot readings, pick a card that can have been supported. So continue on that path. Continue counseling inside of yourself. I just noticed for the first time that this <laughs> hermit is actually a fairy. <laughs> I had never noticed the wings before. Oh my. This is like my spirit my first tarot deck you know that's so funny i never seen this it was like years ago oh my god that i've got this deck so anyways uh nature when i see fairy this is like being connected to the elementals some of you going on hikes you know retreating gives you more access to your true self gives you more access to who you truly are to that essence so especially in terms of self-love, you're able to find yourself more when you ground with nature. What else do we need to know for pile number two about their next spiritual awakening? I wouldn't be surprised that more truth is going to, um, to be revealed. There's an extra card here. We don't know why yet, but we will. Mm-hmm. I feel we want to look at this there first. Wow, the two of cups. Mm -hmm. And the chariot. I do believe, and, and I, I don't know. Yeah, that's my example. Some of you, there was something that was, that you were doing in your relationships. Okay. It's interesting also because the relationship house, which is the seventh house for this new moon in Scorpio, has Chiron retrograde in the degrees that talks about reciprocity, reciprocity, balance, 
rectification of, of give and take of feminine and masculine. Some of you, there was something that you had to shift, the chariot that you had to change in your dynamics, in your relationship. You had to destroy because there was not enough self-love. So your next uh, spiritual awakening is who you are underneath it all. You know, it's, it's who you were always, because I feel as some of you, <laughs> you know, when you're in your teens and I'm not laughing because some of us, we continue this pattern even beyond teen years. Okay. We kind of like say, Oh, I like, I like this music. Oh, me too. I like this band. Oh, me too. I like this uh, activity. Me too. And I feel like this, this, you could have lost yourself in the me too, uh, to find a sense of belonging, but there was a part of you that was every time you tried to belong, there was a part of you that you were leaving behind and, and, and that felt abandoned. Okay. Some of you ever felt like abandonment issues, uh, rejection issues. That was a mirror from others of what you were doing to yourself. Every time you said me too, or I like this too, or I don't like this too. And that was just to be part of the group or part of the relationship. There's something very strong here that is giving you access to this next uh, layer of spiritual awakening. We have the two of wands. Talks about planning, preparation. We have the ace of swords. I love how much truth is coming forward. And the eight of pentacles, some mastery. So that was the extra card. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised through the 28 day cycle for you, palm number two, that you could start seeing this, um, this dynamic of you rescripting how your relationship go, you know, maybe you, in the past you were saying, you know, so what should we do? And you're just like, whatever I, I'm, you know, I'm in for it, whatever. And there's just like, there's, there's a preference there's certain preferences that your soul has that I can feel, you know, um, that you need to almost like know what are those things that you like, you know, what are your hobbies? What are the things that make you vibrate? What are the music, the activities that allow you to relax or feel grounded, feel safe, you know, if, because there's, there's a certain alignment of what is meant for you that wants to manifest because a new moon is a new phase of creation. You're creating a reality that has more love, love that is shining from you. And that's going to be reflected in all of your relationship in all aspects, your partnerships, your relationships, collaborations, people you meet, strangers, all, you know, there's just more love, but you have to acknowledge that type of uh, self-mastery, because it seems that you're still self-mastering in this process. And that's what the universe wants you to know. That's your next spiritual awakening and your next level up. Okay, that's what I have for you, my dear pal number two. I trust this is supporting you. And if it did, please give this video a thumbs up. I'm sending you many cosmic blessings. Namaste. <laughs> Hi, pal number three, welcome to your messages about your next spiritual awakening. You chose the ring card, beautiful energy. It seems like there's like three bands here in this ring, um, feminine, masculine, and the divine. If you chose according to zodiac placement, I strongly suggest the moon because it's a moon reading. We have Cancer, Capricorn, and Aquarius. Let's put them aside. For the ones that are interested in the Cosmic Alignment Energy Session, big announcement, I am giving access to all YouTube Star members, so all layers and levels of membership, because this is a deep cosmic activation. We're working with the Quantum Fascia. I'm doing all three videos and I'm helping and supporting with acupressure point of tuning forks and some breath work to help flush some of the old programs. So some of you, especially if you um, have past anxiety from PTSD, trauma, things that you have in process, I strongly suggest you look into this type of energy work. So let's see what is your next spiritual uh, awakening, my dear pile number three. I do feel there's something here, a highly spiritual, um, that's coming forward. Wow. 
Oh, it's coming through your stillness. Reflect on this moment with love, kindness, and compassion. Okay. Let's see. There's something here through meditation, through staying with the discomfort or your shadow or the unease that is going to give you access to um, your next spiritual awakening. Let's see the dragon energy that is connected to your next layer level of awakening. Dragon energy is all about the nervous system using especially breath work. We have here, ooh, the earth and air dragon represents, oh, I told you, a perfect balance of heaven and earth. Stay balanced, ground your visions, manifest your hopes and dreams. Okay, very interesting. I have to mention this to you already because the placement for the collective Chiron retrograde right now is all about yin yang, rectifying what is off balance, reciprocity. You know, when you're planting a seed of intention, making sure you, you have a tutor. You know, so it grows in alignment with its purpose, with its energy. And this is something that is placed in the seventh house. I'm pointing because I have it on my screen next to me. Um, th this is something that you might want to address. I will put in, in the description box below um, your Chiron placement. Go and check out your Zodiac Chiron placement and go and listen to the frequency. I have a playlist for all Chiron placement of the Zodiac. So Chiron, Wounded Healer. Uh, it's, it's an interesting um, asteroid because it is about activating your own guru, activating the healer within, activating the one part of you that knows how to stay in balance, but also bringing heaven on earth, bringing the realization, the materialization of what you desire to manifest. So there's something here for you, part number three, that can only flow through you, first through your stillness, because this is when you're still, you listen to your emotions, you listen to what mind chatter you could have going on, that you can allow source energy to do its magic, to do its work, okay? So let's get more messages about this for you, pile number three. So your next spiritual awakening is coming from your stillness, through channeling source energy, through aligning in a sacred union uh, with the divine, allowing yourself to throw, to throw, hmm, to throw away, I'm hearing, throw away something, there's, is there is there some old commitments for some of you in pile number three? Maybe there were, if you had any commitment, pile number three, that overstretch your energy, that are overstretching your energy, you're overcommitted, you're going to want to retract, you're going to want to call back that energy for you. I really feel that there's something here um, that needs to be called back. I'm seeing in particular for you, the Uranus uh, retrograde that is in the degrees of Taurus that is all about stillness and looking within introspection. It's in the eighth house. You're going to be mind blown by what you're going to find out through your stillness. And what I mean by this, I remember, I have to share this with you. I remember the first time that I tried to meditate. I closed my eyes and I literally... I was in your yoga position, okay, yogi position. I literally felt that my hips were like this. And I opened up my eyes, shocked, and I was not moving. My body was totally still. Closed back my eyes. So I had never realized that inside of me, I, chaos. When I tell you chaos, it was like, earthquake galore was going on my nervous system was just shaking whether it there was no space for mind there was no space for feeling it was just pure chaos I, I i couldn't believe it so all this to say 
I was definitely not ready at the time <laughs> to deep dive anywhere. So what I did, and it took me a whole year of rebalancing this just through listening to frequencies at night, just through starting with this, because I was so overwhelmed. I'm like, where do I start? Where do I start? I can't, I can't focus. I'm, I fall asleep. I'm too tired. So I received the guidance. It's okay if I fall asleep. I just play certain frequencies that can support me. Okay, so I would say for you, and I already listed it in the video description, the fascia playlist, the quantum playlist is a great one for this whole new moon in Scorpio. So you can fall asleep to it. If you're able to create playlists for yourself, add your Chiron placement to the mix, okay? Just allow yourself to be where you're at. Because I feel that here with the commitment, watch being overly committed, okay? And I feel that some of you, your energy is so committed to things outside of you that there's no space or not enough space for your commitment to self. And honestly, coming from that space where there was <laughs> no space for Audrey, <laughs> okay? And being in, in a reality now where there's just so much more space that is created just from the honoring just the, it's almost like your your breath creates the space it's almost like the way you breathe the way it creates the way you live but we're not raised like this so trust the few little small steps that you can take that can lead you there okay i don't want you to be overwhelmed this can feel overwhelming i can sense it for some of you if that's you okay Give me a ring in a comment below. I'll know what that is, okay? You can just comment a ring and I know that's you, okay? Because I want you to feel supported. Pile number three. Oh my, I remember my first stage <laughs> of awakening. And some of you, okay, that's, yeah, look at this. You keep on having energies that call you within the hermit. If you can go and meditate or listen to music or have some nature walks. Nature, nature, nature is going to be your best friend, okay? Nature is going to remind you of your own nature. Nature is going to remind you of your own circadian rhythm. I really feel that some of you, especially if you're going to be in the north hemisphere of the this earth, going to go towards uh, winter, you want to make sure that you're still getting some light. Very important, those are small little things that I remember as part of falling asleep with the frequencies. I had to make sure that I was getting at least 10 minutes of light. I had a very busy, uh, not even nine to five, more like a seven to seven type of schedule, if not longer. Um, and I had to just take breaks to make sure that I was going to stay aligned. And I was able to get out of that you know, uh, nine to five rat race matrix, you know, uh, that felt very limited, but that was also, um, part of working with source. I feel as some of you, that's your next spiritual awakening is how to work with source, how to channel more source energy. You look at this, um, how to also, I feel that some of you, um, that's part of where the new moon is those degrees of Scorpio that add to the number 44. This is about um, resolving our inner wars. Some of you, there might have been some past conflicts or past commitment that didn't allow you the space. It was keeping you frozen. The space for you to move towards the things that are part of your own purpose, your own becoming. So we're unbecoming this version. We're unbecoming the version uh, that doesn't give that space to the self, okay? Space for communication with spirit. Then we have, see, the five of wands. Five of wands. Let me see if we have this that's going on. Um, five of wands is in uh, the degrees of Leo when you connect tarot to astrology. This is going to be 10th house, 11th house for this new moon. That means that it could be something you witness in your work or in your network. So watch 
the overcommitment. I feel as some of you watch the tendencies to say yes to more work. Make sure you have some space for your spiritual practice. It's, it's so important. I feel especially with the earth and the air, you know, just like taking a walk, for cutting your, your routine here. I'm seeing some of you like, you know, instead of uh, taking your lunch by the computer, just stopping and just going for a 10 minute walk around the block and then eating or eating and then walking around the block. But there's definitely something, um, you know, to, to revisit in your routine, in your health. Virgo, the hermit is Virgo. So it's all about your health, your routine, your habits. And we have a card that is going to uh, give us some more details here. Look at this, the Ten of Cups. Some of you, if you have a family, okay, I know that can be challenging, but I've seen it so many times, and I don't lie, I've, I've seen clients tell me, like, I can't believe how, when I decide to meditate, how my child creates that space for me, but also, like, for them, because they've, children are very, very receptive to sound, um, I've had a lot of soul tribe, you know, sisters that have children that mention to me how their children react to the music and how they sometimes dance or they just fall asleep. And I feel that this is something that you want to include in your day-to-day -day life. The way you build your commitment around your family is also through um, making sure that you have space for spirit. Some of you, I don't know why I'm seeing this energy, but, um, you know, if you don't know the tarot, there is the lover's card. In the lover's card, we have spirit, you know, we have an archangel, and then we have the man and the woman. The man looks at the woman, but the woman doesn't look at back at the man. She looks at the heavens. She looks at the angel realm, and she is always connected to spirit. Some of you, this is something you have to understand. The feminine essence, the feminine gender is here to channel spirit and to be witnessed by the men so they can emulate parts of it. And they're, they're just embodying that perfect triunity. I feel that for you, understanding triunity uh, knowledge and um and form of expression is very important, understanding that. Before you act, ask for guidance, ask for spirit to talk to you. And it could be sometimes, you know, I've seen this throughout my whole spiritual uh, life where, you know, sometimes I have doubts and I'd be like, okay, just give me a sign. And having them just appear just because I ask. Ask and you shall receive. I think that some of you, if you're looking for a certain manifestation, your next spiritual awakening is about the power of you asking and receiving. But that means also uh, you're going to want to disconnect or uh, watch your commitment to others and make sure that you have a great commitment to source. Because it takes, people don't realize, but when you start seeing aura and st start seeing and witnessing energy move, it takes a lot of energy, spirit, ether energy to manifest those synchronicities. Okay. And the more you're a channel and allowing that source energy to flow through you, the less, you know, the less effort it takes, but the more you see that, that energy. So there's a lot, you, you become like this whole big channel for source to manifest on earth. And I think this is very much in alignment with your next, uh, spiritual awakening here. Pile number three, we have, oh, look at this, the King of Pentacles, beautiful. And the five, interesting five, five. So for you, pile number three, Noticing 5-5 five, five is going to be, or 5-5-5, five, 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 going to be a call for you to change your focus. Because here is the swords, is the thoughts. The ones here is the energy that drives you, okay? It's like what pushes you to act. The fire that puts you, push, pushes you to act. When you're going to see 5-5-5 five, 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 or 5-5, five, five, this is a channel energy from spirit that's saying like, you need to either change what you're thinking or what you're doing, or it's a confirmation that 
how you changed the way you thought about it or how you perceived something or acted about it is in alignment. You'll know if it's one way or the other, okay? But I really feel, you see here, still through sleep and stillness, there's an anchoring. So for you, pile number three, the guidance is very much to become that channel. Your, your next spiritual awakening is through your stillness, is through you connecting to source in deeper ways, through you committing to your spiritual self and knowing that it will ripple emotionally in all aspects of your life, okay? So that's what I have for you, pile number three. I'm sending you many blessings and much love and light. And remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste. Hi, pile number four. Welcome to your messages. This is all about your next spiritual awakening. So if you chose this pile, it's connected to the card Eros. Okay, we have a diamond and a mouth. Okay, so maybe something about communication. The diamond is some, you know, expression of growth, spiritual growth, because it gets all this shine and brightness and all those facets through the pressure okay so let's see what we have if you chose this pile according to your zodiac placement i strongly suggest your moon placement we have scorpio pisces and gemini i'm going to put this on the side i want to make a little announcement i am going to give access to all youtube star family members so all three levels to the cosmic alignment energy session for the Scorpio new moon. This is all about deep diving into the quantum fascia. So we're doing acupressure point through breath work, tuning force, and all of this through all the three videos of the quantum fascia playlist. I will list the playlist there. If some of you just want to connect to the playlist and all recommended frequencies for this Scorpio new moon energy. All right, let's look at your next spiritual awakening, my dear pile number four. Oh, choice. Wow. By staying conscious in your thoughts, you guide your journey in the direction of choice. So there's, there's an energy with, you know, the word choice. First of all, it reminds me of the fool card because the number zero you know, almost like a fresh start energy. Now, the full card is also associated to Uranus. I have just next to me the uh, map for the new moon in Scorpio. And Uranus, connected to the full, is going to be in the eighth house. So Scorpio house. So that means in those degrees, which is interesting, where we have the retrograde for Uranus, it's all about introspection. And what I feel here for you, my dear pile number four, is that you've done a lot of shadow work. You've done a lot of introspection. You have done some shining the light onto certain spaces and places of yourself and maybe reviewing some of your past choices, okay? And here... With the Eros card, uh, maybe some of you, it's interesting because Eros can be connected to Taurus because of the senses and that quality of the touch or any earth placement for that matter, okay? But I really feel that for you here, pile number four, there could have been maybe a drive through the senses, certain choices that were based more on material choices or fulfilling of the senses that maybe you're changing. Maybe you're also changing your perception of what type of senses and experiences you want to manifest. You know, uh, experiencing being, I don't know why I'm saying this, <laughs> being touched by spirit. I don't know if ever you ever had that encounter or, you know, feeling almost the presence of... Uh, a, a, a spirit or someone that has passed or some some angel uh, manifesting miracles being saved by the divine by God okay there's something here about your choices um, that are part of your next level and the way you're going to manifest your next 
decisions okay so let's see what dragon energy you have here dragon energy is all about the nervous system it's activated through the breath okay so let's see what we have for you pile number four wow okay silver lunar dragon bathes you in divine feminine light oh i love this come into balance and practice peace harmony and cooperation expand your casual chakra okay beautiful energy i wouldn't be surprised with this i'm going to need my phone because i can't remember exactly the date but there's going to be a meaningful uh revelation or maybe a meaningful ripple effect of your choices maybe some of you you've changed the way you made certain choices in your life or they're more spiritually inclined or take into account your spiritual self you know parts of yourself that uh are not just physically based there's going to be an illumination there's going to be something strong that's going to culminate and let me get that date for you um as far as this moon let me see when that new moon is gonna be okay full moon on the 15th so november 15 okay oh interesting in taurus aha <laughs> some of you that might be relevant okay so there's something here about your choices that is part of your next spiritual awakening this is going to be a culmination we're gonna get some details because right now we just feel that there's a shift for you, pile number four, a shift of the way you, you see life, experience life, and thus make certain decisions, you know? Maybe some of you, you were just caught into uh, just the old matrix, the old matrices of, of seeing life. Okay, look at this. We have first the Queen of Wands and the Seven of pentacles i feel that your choices now look at this she has that flame that flame that is in her cape which looks orange almost like connected to the womb i feel that some of you your choices are now much more heart-centered your connection between your womb and your heart is much more calibrated. Some of you, if you are part of the YouTube star family, I am going to add the womb heart recalibration. I really feel that it could be something that supports you. And some of you, if you don't have access to this, I'm going to put the auric uh, detoxifier for the womb. This is, this is something maybe some of you that you may have not realized that some of the past decisions that you made or certain choices, they were highly influenced by the parents, by the womb. I'm finding it just now realizing that the new moon in Scorpio is going to be in the first house. Those degrees of Scorpio are about resolving our inner wars understanding what duality lives inside of us and outside but in this case it's going to be in the house of the womb which is the first house the house um, you know each house is connected to a year in age and that first house is the year zero in gestation okay so i feel that some of you especially you pile number four you did not realize but you may have had the first part of your life that were that was highly based or highly subconsciously driven through the choices that were part of what you inherited. Because with the Seven of Pentacles, you had to, exp part of you getting to that next spiritual awakening was to go through that. I was going to, I heard entrapment, but it's almost like, you know, like a, binaural beats can entrain your brain it's almost like you were caught in that brain entrapment entrainment that repetition okay uh not consciously but it was part of you waking up but also that next layer that's coming up okay so let's see what that next layer contains okay 
Very interesting. Some womb healing here for pile number four. Okay, okay. Different order of things. You're definitely um, coming with a different plan. We'll see. Okay. And those are together. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, what is this? Okay, I'll entertain it. Okay, I just I, I just need a little space, you pile on before. You're funny. Okay. Alright. So we have the six of cups. This is a childhood card. Okay. We have the two of swords. We have the page of wands. The Two of Swords, another card of choice. Okay, I feel that I need to see the whole picture before I can I can move towards anything. Those three cards are for the last. We have the Ten of Wands. And we have the Seven of Cups. Wow. Okay. With the Seven of Cups and the Ten of Wands, you can see here, um, there's a lot of emotional illusion. Okay, so some of you, if you're watching this and you're at the beginning of your spiritual awakening, okay, or some of you are more advanced, okay, but I feel there is a strong awareness of the past illusions, the past things, subconscious patterns. I think I just, just wrote in my journal something along the lines like, how did I even survive in that type of entrapment like I could see how blindsided I was and I was like oh my god I could this could have happened this could have happened and I didn't feel like a sense of panic but I'm like more of like a wow effect of how many blind spots I had but also a wow effect but of how divinely protected I was okay so I feel there's a, some type of wow revelation that's coming for you November 15 definitely through your intuition through your subconscious I wouldn't be surprised some of you it could be through uh your dreams okay and realization also about certain I, I'm hearing emotional baggage, a certain emotional baggage that you had to carry. There was some cycle of you carrying things that did not belong to you, that you inherited, that were part of the lineage, that were part of getting you into that next level. Now, this next level, I can feel this is this is where you're you're choosing a whole different line. And some of you, I feel that 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 next phase is much more connected to the version of yourself uh, that you were as a child. That is actually very much about the energy for this new moon in Scorpio, unbecoming, unraveling. It's more like realizing that the path of awakening is more about removing the things we thought we were or we were told we were or we had to be. Um, and, and, and coming back to that initial state that we were born with that initial spark okay so I really feel um here there's some bubble of energy that remind me of maybe being clear cognizant some of you there might be some past knowing that is going to resurface to you certain desires certain knowing about things you wanted to be, things you wanted to manifest. Okay, let's get some more messages here. We have the Six of Pentacles, lovely. We have the Ten of Pentacles, even lovelier. <laughs> and then we have the Two of Wands. I feel that there's this phase, which is, you know, the new moon is a phase of 28 days. So you're starting this next spiritual chapter, I feel, where your choices are much more based on the spiritual version of yourself, your desire are more spiritually inclined or channeled from source, you know, they're, they're very different than the one that you maybe inherited, or the one that felt that they weigh you down, okay, or drained you, I feel that some of the choices of the past could have drained you, now, there is 
this first phase. I feel that you're entering a phase where this is the beginning of a phase before you manifest something greater. It's it's not it's in the becoming. You have a lot of womb energy, so it feels like it's in gestation for you, especially with the two of wands. This is a, a card of preparation. So it's almost like here, my dear pile number four, your choice, which is a vibrational choice. And how do you vibrationally choose certain things? It's through the things you say, the things you rehearse as habits, it's through the things you rehearse as feelings. You vibrationally align to a certain version of who you believe you are, okay? And when you align to believing and feeling and aligning to that version that is more connected to your inner child, to that source energy expression, you'll start seeing more inspired ideas that will be more in balance. The Six of Pentacles is about balance, generosity, that will lead you to build a certain empire. But it seems because we have the page here at the beginning and the two of wands and that really good energy that this is this is in the making. You're in a phase of 28 days where you're receiving some insights from spirit for choosing certain desires, certain manifestations, certain plans that are more in alignment with that initial um, state of beingness you know that spark of light when you were born okay so that's what I have for you my dear pile number four I trust this supported you I'm sending you many blessings and much love and light and if it supported you please give this video a thumbs up namaste